what you're talking about. It's it's very hard to, especially in that situation. You no job, you know nothing really going on. You know you're you're stuck mentally. Like you just, you know, like if you're stuck. Presented by Justin Soup. You ready? Are you ready? All right. Uh... <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Biggest fan. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Soup Cast. We are diving back into the soup today with Matt. What would you like to be known as? You guys can just call me Matt. Whatever. Whatever yes. floats your boat. Schultz and Ladders is my DJ Schultz name. Schultz and Ladders. Had some fun doing that. Took a break for a little while. Um, just um, some personal reasons, some things I need to work on in my own life. And then on top of that, unfortunately, I feel like things are changing in our scene. And I feel like there's a wide variety of... Uh, sometimes there's some bullying going on in our scene. Some locals get hit really hard. And they don't, uh, they don't cherish something. And then there's the other... Uh, um, locals that are there and they don't cherish the opportunity that they get you know just being able to play it all guys is truly awesome it's really fun to go out and perform for people whether there's no one in the room or the room is full it's totally awesome every time no I was gonna I was gonna make a video about uh, concert photography videography and I was going to make uh, like tips and pointers about like if you if this is what you want to do in passion like this is what you should look out for like the vent the venues that you work for if it seems sketchy or anything like that like they're not paying you what you, if they're, if you're not paying you or you're not getting credited or in some fan or, or some manner getting paid or credited I should say I, and I, payment doesn't have to come in cash um, I think uh, one of the biggest payouts is just being able to simply play and practice. Oh, I'm talking about video and media. And video stuff. and media. But like, I'm saying that you don't even need to get paid for like in cash. You can get paid by credit or shout outs or just having your name there. Just like yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah. Just getting credit for what you did in any aspect: videography, media, being able to go out and play at the clubs and DJ. Um, what I think. If there was any tips we could maybe offer some of the people from both ends of the spectrum, I would say from a DJ perspective, because that's all, that's what it is for me, is just a basic DJing hobby. I unfortunately don't produce my own music, but I love what I do when I do play. I try to be respectful of everyone's music. Don't play someone's track that I know is going to be playing that night. Um... But you mix it, right? I mix like, it, yes, I mix it. You create your own combos I, co and combos, mashups, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, you, there's some practice that goes into it. But then, I mean, I would like to offer for people, just be gracious of what you get. You know, I've I've seen posts from local from local promoters saying, you know, like, you guys are you guys are whining about having to play with someone that you don't like, or you're having to take a slot you don't like it's just like you know it's a blessing you even get to play you understand how like blowing up these guys as drag messengers are like you're lucky sometimes they even see you pop up in their messages right away see like one thing one thing i think even myself so i don't know how this is going to sound but creators in any field video uh physical art um, music, anything like that. I feel like we get to, because of the socialness that we have from Instagram and Snapchat and all that, we get too much in our head, uh, especially me last year when I was going through a bunch of that rough shit, not having a job and whatnot. I was so in my head about someone else that I couldn't even pay attention on my own thing. And that is so bizarre. And I think some sometimes that's, that's happening with what you're talking about. It's, it's very hard to especially in that situation you know job you know nothing really going on you know you're, you're stuck mentally like you just you know like if you're stuck being hot-headed on a certain topic or you're stuck uh and you won't you won't come back and like take a step back and realize what's going on it's gonna it's gonna catch up with you eventually and it's gonna suck until you're hit in the face like so with you, reality so you get so you get smacked right in the face and you're like why like why did that just happen it couldn't wait till like six months from now, but no, today's the day. 
I think I think my biggest smack in the face. Well, there was two, but I had like a lot of anxiety and um, paranoia like going on the the whole time. But the biggest thing was like when I started getting su- sued about like not paying my car payment, mm-hmm. and like when I almost lost my car. That's when I was like before that had like really come into full effect into courts where it was almost like the last couple of days to make a payment. Um, like that's when I was really like, okay, like I either need to change something and step up and make sure that what I'm putting my time towards when I'm not at this part-time job is really going towards something that's going to help me in my life. And luckily I found something. And then by the time that was over, I found Brian offered me this job to come in and meet the people and fill an application. So luckily things worked out, but yeah, if you don't have that reality check, even if you're doing good, you need a reality yeah, check, that, man. See, that's how it is for me. Is like I may have landed a new career choice of of being a base of a basically operate basic machinist. I may have taken on a new career path, but like I still have my bills. They still it still chews up what you know. <coughs> it's still a smack in the face every two weeks. It limits me to to the fun I can have and the things I can do. So when I say that, you know. I'm okay with stepping outside the scene for a while to fix some things in my own life. It's not because I have, I'm 100% mad at the scene. It's more of like I want to fix some things in my life. Like yeah. you just talked about losing a car. I can't have that happen. Like yeah. you know what I mean? I had to. I That's was like, at that point. I was 200. I was what they call $200 plus delinquent over what I needed to pay. I paid it up finally. You know, and I'm like right where I need to be, caught up, paid, car insurance, bills are all paid. I may not be, like, the richest guy by the end of it, but you know what? In my mind, I'm happy and content that I know that bills are paid, rent's paid, my lady's happy, Yeah, there's food in the house. I'm just, I'm, like, I was complaining about getting raked over the coals with bills at the first of the month, mm-hmm. and, like, Marie said something about, like, either, like, uh brain stuck for a minute either something like about not just waiting until they're paid off or something and i was like well really i'm just thankful that i got those bills because yeah. like it being on a regular schedule now i had like on the 15th and i'm always thinking ahead and it's really got me in a good groove mindset like even though it and sucks the, like it's like dude you you have like a day a monthly schedule that at the end of the day you know like that's kind of keeping you like sane in and that, a way and then, you know as we as we get older you know later later into our 20s and even into our 30s you know we're finally we're finally starting to realize after basically financially ruining our ruining ourselves in the early 20s <laughs> we all know we did it guys come on now and uh you get a little bit older and each year and you're like all right i'll hold myself to this schedule and like even like something as basic as a cell phone if you go if you do go with your cell phone carrier Eventually, you know, they're going to be like, hey, you want the newest phone. And then every year it's like, hey, you're eligible to upgrade again. You want the next best thing. You don't have to really pay anything out of pocket. Yes, you're still paying the least amount on the phone over time. But it's just a reoccurring thing. You don't, they don't, it's not like they throw on another 2000 on your, it's a your trap. phone. It's a, you're stuck in it in a, in a sense, but they always, they keep you happy in a sense. Yeah. Well, it's like, they're like, well, you can have the new phone. It's got all the new features, everything that you want. And because they know that Americans are impatient, and I'm sure a lot of other people are too. Don't make us pay out the we're, ass. <laughs> we're there, we say yes, and then that extends our contract, and we're stuck with them, and that prolongs our goal of being out. So I, I finally went with straight talk. Fifty dollars a month, man. Can't I, beat it. I don't. I've had. I've had it before. I will not hate on it. It's an excellent service. It's just more or less. I kept breaking phones, having oh, stupid yeah. luck, and I was like. They finally meant this thing called insurance on your phone. Holy shit, you know? Dude, Kyle was telling telling me how uh, he pays like $100, and he has like three replacement phones. They send him it after he pays $100, and he doesn't have to send back the phone he had currently until the new phone comes, and he activates it. Yeah. And he can get that at the end of his plan and then cash in on that and get the new phone. See, and like, I, I mean, I suppose I don't have that kind of insurance, nothing crazy like that, but something basic that my insurance offers me is, like, you know, if I lose the phone, they'll replace it within 24 hours of me filing a claim, pay the deductible, obviously. Or um, if I crack my screen or something, they will send someone to your home to fix it on site. Oh, nice. For, yeah. for 30 bucks. And it's see, like, mine's been through like hell and back. Like, I I've can had this see for three, that. Three years or so, I just got the screen replaced again 
for like the sixth time. The battery went. Uh, my friend Sam Hex replaced that. It like stopped charging. Like it would be on the charger oh, and it'd be dead, man. Like it's the worst thing. You ever have battery issues? I've had no. Wait till you have a charge port issue <coughs> where your where your cord won't like it'll fit right and it'll say it's charging, but it'll say like five hours until done or oh god, or, my aux port and then work. You, then you have to like play play with uh oh, yeah you gotta get, like go like that and you just twist it twist it and suddenly tricks. you just chuck the phone across the room and be like yes now i can get a new one <laughs> <laughs> i was so i was so angry not angry but i was so like it was weird because the way my phone cra- uh, broke this last time was that part of the screen wouldn't work and i didn't do anything so i pulled it out of my pocket after i got out of a car that i was fixing up in detail and it just wouldn't let me text. And it was the most annoying thing because I could get some layers of work and some not. And Did you was... expose it to any mag- magnetism? Anything no, like that? No, I, I think it was the cracks and water eventually got into it because I'm around water a lot. Freaking, so. um, back when LG, when the LG V2, LG G2 was out a few years ago, that's when the first double touch screen ca- came on. I was at work and I didn't have insurance on my phone. Mm-hmm. I didn't really care for it at that time. I went into work two weeks into my new job at that point. Walked by a metal tank, cracked my screen right there, done for. And I was like, they told me, like, yeah, you still owe 200 on the phone and you don't have insurance. I'm like, Ugh. At least phone screens, like, you don't have to get that, like, replaced by them. For for an iPhone, if you have iPhones. Yeah, if you have... But yeah, if you have depends. LGs and that, they Android. don't really make them, I don't think. Oh, God. I don't... Not hating on iPhone. Okay, I am hating on iPhone a little bit. I <laughs> feel like they... Truth comes out. They... they from the experience I had with my girlfriend, they they literally, we went to Xfinity to ask why the, the, the SIM card stopped working. She had no service, nothing. She had paid her bill, et cetera, you know, everything was up to yeah. date. So they're like, well, we don't know what to do. Take it to Apple. So we went all the way to Mall of America in their corporate store. They completely reset her, her phone, deleted everything off of it after, of course, she backed it up. And she, she they reloaded her phone with a new SIM card and everything. Didn't work nothing was working they're like yeah take it back to xfinity i'm like no 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 no. we're never done playing this game you can get on my phone plan i'll get you a brand new shiny phone and you can just be on my phone plan and this (coughs) woman so she has a phone case like me but if you take off the back it's all cracked up and i'm like what are you doing brand new s10 plus and, and it's, all cra- cracked. And it's all cracked so it's on got the, back. the glass back it's got then? the glass back too yeah okay. i'm like well if you want a new phone at some point you're gonna have to pay to get that fixed they're gonna charge you for it yeah apple brought, brought that back too <laughs> oh, man i don't i don't understand the whole glass thing i think it's because it's a transparent look and it gets like a sleek design it's smoother too you know and what i'm what i don't like is like if you look at some like the older phones like an s7 will go back that far you have the outer box cases that would actually cover the screen, mm-hmm. and now you have the now you're exposing this the whole time, and it's like it's not waterproof either because the old ones used to be waterproof. Well, this is waterproof like I think thirty minutes. I think that's it. Something the phone like, or the case. The fo- the phone. Oh, I don't know about well, the case. The case, obviously, I don't know. Maybe it's buoyant. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool though. I mean, at least it's uh. It's basically a hey, you dropped your phone in water, get it out now, or you're screwed. <laughs> so um. How long have you been played, playing video games? Not to switch topics, but how long have you been playing video games? Since I was a child. Since oh, man, child. like, so before, I want to say, like, Sega Genesis, okay, maybe yeah. Super Nintendo. So like before they could send patch updates and be yeah, like, Yeah, oh, before okay, they're right. like, hey, we screwed up, we're going to send a patch out and make you do day one downloads, which is complete trash to me. It's like, that sh- the game should be ready on release day. Don't have update file the moment I turn it on. How I feel Call of, Call of Duty is really oh, stay there God. like, check out this beta, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but check so... Check out this 60 gig update, man. <sighs> I was watching something with Tony Hawk on YouTube, and it was, it had to be his podcast or something, but they were talking about his pro skater days, um, the the games, the Tony Hawk pro skaters. Mm-hmm. He said like the first one or something, he would like, text the guys that were making it and asked if that he could like add in the 900 kickflip or whatever mm-hmm. something something like that i'm not a skateboarder but uh and he said that if they he didn't get that over to them before they finalized it and sent it over to activision that that wouldn't be in there and that got my mind thinking about like see that's why i think it'd be stupid to hold a contract with any with any gaming making company because you're you're held to these expectations like think about it activision has has contracts with uh treyarch and infinity ward and or, then and then Blizzard Sledgehammer, and Sledgehammer, and I think Blizzard, Sledgehammer, you know, like... They got a few but other they companies, ro- too, but yeah. But on the Call of Duty series, if you think about it, they rotate games every year. Who makes it? It's released by three separate developers, I believe, yeah. now. Yeah, I, and plus they have a couple co-studios that, like, do other things like, in, uh, in the Call of Duty games. Like, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, that was the biggest letdown in history. <coughs> of me. 
Really? Uh, you didn't uh, like Advanced Warfare? If you if you got if you if you knew how to like boost strafe essentially, if you got that down, then it was awesome. Oh, but dude, if you didn't if you didn't know how to do it otherwise, oh it sucked. It was terrible. But Advanced so my Call of Duties went Black Ops one, MW three, Black Ops two, all right, we good. Then you hit me with um uh, was it Advanced Warfare next or was it Ghost? It was Ghost next. It was Ghost oh. Ghost was like Black Ops 2 hype, Justin's all, like feeling great about Call of Duty, and Ghost changed everything. And I you noticed that they hated. never they never freaking updated. They they're so if you look at Battlefield and their game engine, it looks fabulous, like just beautiful, beautiful like gameplay, you know, and everything. And uh, the maps look great, the weapons, everything looks great. But if you go to Call of Duty, I don't feel like they ever like put it through a new engine yet. It's really expensive to do put a game into a new engine. I think they're like evolving it. They might have sw- it's from slow, PS3 though. and Xbox to PS4 and Xbox One. I think they 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 made a new one or something because they would have had to because PS3 was so different from PS4. Well, mm-hmm. Or at least you know upgraded it somehow because that's a lot of coding. That's yeah, it, it takes a lot of work. But I mean, for me. I don't know. One thing I wish that Call of Duty would add in what Battlefield does the destructible environments. So you can basically That's surprising dis- that they haven't added that because oh, like the, make those so much small more maps, like because you know it is a war game. Like I like, understand that the buildings are you know not destructible. They want them to stay there, but it also could be like Fortnite in it a way, be fun where you can't destroy certain things, but you can destroy a lot of the other stuff. See, like you know that's what bothers me is like okay. So it's there's small maps in Call of Duty remotely most of the time. My okay. warfare is huge this well, year. Well, I'm just saying. Okay, so there's a guy on the other side of a wall, and you're running by that house, and you know he's there, and you chuck a grenade through the front door. Come on, why can't you blow out that back wall and kill him? Or yeah, at least do some damage. Do some damage, something. Let him know, like, hey, I know you're there, buddy. Like, here. yeah, that's like my favorite thing. Like in Fortnite, is I just like recently I've been just chucking grenades. I've gotten a few kills from it. Like one time I landed and. And dude was like right here by the airplane, and he like started challenging me. And eventually, I backed off, sneaked around him, and threw a grenade, and it just went. He eliminated him right away. But yeah, I for, if Call of Duty could have something like that, they've tried it. Like the they've tried the interactive map changes, and you know, like Hydro and Black Ops Two, and there's. Other I feel ones. like they um, I don't, <coughs> I don't know. I feel like they're too stuck in their ways, maybe. But another thing, I or they don't have enough time. Oh well, yeah, we're speaking about. You know, having fun in the game, we can switch over to the fun parts of the game. I used to love chucking, like, random throwing knives across the map and nailing those kind of kills. Or, uh, if you took, if you, in Modern Warfare 2, I forgot what map it was, but it was in Domination, and the flag B was in the center of this bridge, in the center of the map. You could literally sit there and scavenge for javelin rockets and aim them right at that flag, and you would get like multi kills, triple kills all night long. Mm, that'd be like a troll almost. Like, <laughs> it was sitting there, because and... <laughs> patching wasn't a huge, wasn't a too huge of a thing. It took until dang near the next Call of Duty came out or longer to like fix glitches in uh, what was it? I think it was like Spec Ops mode. You oh, could okay. jump out of the map and stuff, and like leave and go to a completely other portion of the map well before updates that's when glitches were like they're that, fun. that's when you could make a video on a glitch and the glitch would stay there yeah for like now a year you make or two. It and it's like it's not gone there. yeah it's well and then finally you know like uh <coughs> xbox you know microsoft has opened up xbox to modding you know they, they'll welcome mods on the console now a little more ps4 not online basic. though right just like single you can make, player or I I I like wouldn't, I can't say or, I can't yeah, I Fallout, Fallout Fallout you're allowed to mod and maybe Grand Theft Auto yeah you can do some pretty basic pretty cool things with it like on Xbox PS4 you're heavily limited because Sony's they're stubborn as, sh- as shit like come on guys wake up well did you did you ever hear about that Fortnite uh, Fortnite YouTuber Jarvis he was he made a video in a private match on Fortnite about hacking. Which, if you're that big, maybe you shouldn't do that. But he was doing it for fun. No, no competitive things at all, and not online. Mm-hmm. They banned him for like forever, like Jeez. indefinitely for Jeez. doing that because he posted a video. He's a public figure. They know his account. If he posts a video with a new account, like they're gonna figure that out. You know. I uh, 
I used to be really into like the modded lobbies, the ones that were not oh, the not legal, those. or you would boost like tenth prestige or something in the Black college. Ops Two. I, I did that in Black Ops Two. Thing for my snipers, I wanted to get them like one sniper in particular. I wanted to get. I used gold. to rent out the lobbies for me and my friends. Really? Yeah, I used to rent them. Be like, all right, guys, level up. We'd get, we'd make like six different accounts, and I bring everybody a, on a server, and we'd do it. Cash? Did you have to pay cash, or was uh, it, it was over PayPal? But most of the time, so oh, you would okay. you would find like uh, a legit someone who would host it. Yeah, but I would always make friends with them, and what. I would do what I got out of it. So you, the infections, you know, like the hacks, like the yeah. wall hack, you know, s the super good steady aim, you know, like you basically can't miss the aimbot, all that stuff. What I would do, I would charge people to get into the lobby to level up and get one-time infections. What I got out of it from all the money I gathered around and paid the the, the host, yeah, the, the guy that had the hacked Xbox, he would give me lifetime infections in any account I wanted. So I would just go in there, level up, get my infections, and every day he would invite me. Every day he was on, he would invite me into the lobby, get quick infections, and go on. I did play the game legit, though, and did get to 10th Prestige legit without any hacking or anything like that. Yeah, but, it's like... A, it's all a matter of fun at, after you finish. Game, like, you can only play... I mean, okay, I say this perspectively, but you can only play a game so much before it gets boring, before mm -hmm. you want to try those things, you know? Yeah. Like, everybody, like... Maybe you're not doing it for legitimate reasons, some people, like if they want to trick shot and get aimbot and woo. But for me, like I did Modern Warfare 2, I just remembered on PS3, like I tried loading up like aimbots and shit until I realized that someone had to give it to me. But that stuff was kind of fun. Like I got into private lobbies and stuff, and by that time, that was on Modern Warfare I, 2. Everyone was hacking. I, so. act I actually have a digital copy of the XEX menu <coughs> at home from, from a JTAGged Xbox, the hacked really? ones. I actually have a copy of that menu. <laughs> Still, I don't use it because I don't have the Xbox anymore, obviously. But um, it was it was fun. Like one thing I always told my friends, I'm like, expect a one day ban, and make sure you put your stats as legit, not outrageous. Because you would look at the leaderboards and you see someone with 60 million kills up there. You're like, yeah, that's totally legit, bro. That's totally legit, bro. When you go down, you see people with like 125,000, 200,000. Yeah, that's more legit looking, you know, because that was that was possible, that was feasible. Put yourself like in 200th position on the That's what we do. There, there was an option in on your D-pad to prestige, 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 prestige to 10. Yeah. And then there was one for all challenges, unlock, all of it. <laughs> and there was another one for, um, shit, I just forgot what I was talking about. The, um... You're talking about leveling up and making yourself legit. Uh, oh, the, then there yeah. was one for the stat choice. You would hold it and use your, your other, the other, the control stick to pick, you know, legit, bad, or really good. You only got bad stats if the host didn't like you and he deranked you. That was a possibility too. If you oh, snuck into a lobby all the time, you get in there and people would take away everything from you and put you like negative seventy million kills or seventy thousand kills or whatever. You know, like point of no recovery. That's what I was talking about. Like back, like after I got modded really heavily, that's when I was playing it. Like I, I never was in there in Modern Warfare Two. My dad never wanted us playing war games, so I'd always play NASCAR games, dirt and racing games, and stuff like that. Did you know those hacked lobbies? When you get into that person's server, they can actually read your IP address and track you and like get your info. That's another thing. You, you get your stuff would get exposed being in those lobbies. Because I remember that one time my cousin joined my lobby and I told him not to join because it was supposed to be for me only at that day. And uh, he goes in and he gets deranked and I'm like, oh man. And the next thing you know, he's like, my account's gone. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did he check his account? Yeah, I, I got him to give it back luckily. You know, as I talked to the host, I'm like, come on, man, that's my cousin. Like, he didn't know any better. He's only like 13 years old. Leave him alone. Damn. There was only one time I had it. Well, there might have been a couple times, but my memory's pretty blank. There was one time I remember, though. They're these stupid, these stupid hackers, man. They're on Twitter, and I think they're DMing me. And they were basically telling me that they were going to take my account, and they told me, like, my mom and dad's, like, name, but I had a Facebook at the time, so they could just figure out my IP address, go to my Facebook, and figure out all that. So I wasn't really scared about that. And so eventually I, I, I was like, you know what, fuck it, like, I don't want Twitter. So do you, I just gave him all the information. I was like, so this, you guys can look like you hacked someone, but you didn't hack me. I gave you the information. <laughs> gave you the information. <laughs> this went over across, like, a couple hours, and they couldn't prove anything. They, like, 
kept like threatening me and telling me that like hey i'm gonna hack your account and i was like you guys are so fake <laughs> like there's lizard squad like leave it up to the real hackers stop like bullying people and saying you're gonna hack them because that's gonna work on four that was so that was so childish back in the day though like even in halo i had it happen to me one time and that, that sucked but like luckily i wasn't too invested in the account anyway i just made my mom cancel her credit card you know and all that etc but like some kids, you know, they're really gullible. Some people, you know. Oh, that was me. I was gullible. Well, I used to run, I used to have this program. It was called Net Tools, and then I forgot the other one. But what it would do is it would read everyone's IP in the lobby, and you would find out who had the strongest connection because the program would like highlight who has the strongest connection. <laughs> if you didn't like the host, you could host boot somebody have an online match, and it'd be totally legit. Whoa! <laughs> I had a lag switch. That's that's basically what it was. Like it was for a, for a minute, I tried building one. Like I built one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it worked. I can't remember because I you had to get host. You couldn't just like be a random joining. Yeah, you had not to be everyone host. understood that you had to be host in some situations. Yeah. So like it like eventually I got frustrated with it because I was just like, dude, it's like not really working. Like I thought it would because I'm not host all the time. So I was just like, yeah, whatever. But I made it. Mm-hmm. Like I had to like separate like Ethernet cords and stuff, yeah, and you, had, you had to cut switch. the Ethernet cord open. You had to like solder the wires or twist them around somehow. There's, yeah, there's multiple ways you can. It was done so it. it was so easy to make one, but like the practicality of it is just not. You're just there. goofing off at yeah. that point. <laughs> and, but it was fun, like to me. Yeah, I uh, I was playing Halo three one time, and I was watching a video on how to make a leg switch. <laughs> this guy literally had it down to button. Really? Yeah, he had it down to a button. I don't see. I don't know about how host, how dominant you had host has to be in order to be able to do that. I feel like in some situations you get to be host, but for lag switching, it it could vary. Because okay. honestly, what you're doing is you're glitching your own internet. So that's what this guy would do. He click like it. Turning on. So if he was off. getting killed, he would click it, and it would freeze him, and he would appear somewhere else. Cause that's and where, he had, where he had moved to, and he'd kill him that way. I'm like, that's devious, but kind of an asshole move yeah like i don't i don't even remember why i made it or whatnot i was just so bored with call of duty like if i would have been able to make this kind of content back then like i would have been a fucking pro like i'd have been big (laughs) on youtube because i was already making a video a day i already had like a mic setup and stuff like Mm -hmm. it just all all that happened was i got a girlfriend and stuff and really like the content i was making was getting boring so i had no like it was just a face cam and Call of Duty. It was the cut comms, man. <laughs> I was a Call of Duty cut com. I, man, Call of Duty, though, that game has pissed me off so many times. Oh, that's all I would play. Uh, I know. I used to be so committed to it. I used to be committed to Halo, too. Like, it used to be about the clans and all that. <laughs> and Halo just, like, stopped. Yeah, like Halo 3, and then it was like, I want to say Halo 3 ODST, and then it was Halo Reach. Mm-hmm. I bought Halo Reach. It was fun. Oh, Halo Reach was fun. Halo Reach that. was definitely really fun. I played that pretty a lot. But then I forgot what happened after that. I kind of draw a blank. I feel like it's almost better that Halo stopped when it did, though, because like Call of Duty, Call of Duty's a machine, man. Like they're gonna they're this they're fifteen copy years and pace, but now it's got new graphics and they they really they figured out that they can do this now and they have more. That's what's happening though. They're copy and pasting. Like it's a new game, but like the same tactics, and now now that you're not paying for loot crates, you're buying a battle pass. But they're can't like have you heard of? Have <laughs> they're you seen? still they're still doing uh, what are those things called? They're not doing supply drops. Well, what's that word uh, that they use for in-game buys? Oh, microtransactions. Yeah, dude, that's how they like after Black Ops Two. That's how they realized that they could make a bunch of money. And now the problem is, is that they've made so much money off of transactions, they can't back down because their investors want to see that same number. And if they see a drop, guess what? Their investors are gonna yeah pull out. So they're kind of I... stuck with what they've done to themselves, you know. I've always wanted to invest in something, but I want quick growth, and it's like it's not going to happen overnight type not, thing, not you know. And you gotta you gotta be able to buy a good decent few of them, you know, like because some companies will hold you to like so many shares you have to buy. Yeah. So if you're at sixty dollars a share and they want you to have a minimum of like five shares, you know, it's kind of expensive. Think about Papa John's. <laughs> he had some drama that went down, and he basically had to sell uh, most of his shares. I think he sh- sold off like eight million shares, and he oh. got like f- like a bunch of money, like millions of dollars. <laughs> and he still owns like hundred million shares or something. He, he owns like, he owned a bunch. Like it's, it was his company, man. Think think about that though. A hundred like millions of shares. You know, like 
They say that like some of the, like the average billionaires make like ninety six thousand an hour. Can you Be- ma- because of investments? Either because of the stock market, their own personal business growth, or whatever their shenanigans they're into. That's nuts. Like I want to make ninety six thousand an hour. Could you imagine that? Dude, could you imagine getting a check for selling off a business that you made? <laughs> and it, it was it was profitable. Like it was super profitable. Well, like. You know how like Elon Musk started, right? Like he made he made like one business, sold it off. Made another business, sold it off. He may have been he may have been failing here or there, and that's what like people would hear back then. But like he was slowly making money to the point where he could make a space and car um, company that people love. I I saw a vi- a small documentary video video about Bill Gates about what he did when he first started making really good money. They said one of the first things he did. He didn't go out and buy, like, fancy stuff. He actually paid off his house payment and his car. Go him. Next thing is charity. Yes, that's what I, that's, that's, I, I found that admirable that he just didn't let it instantly go to his head. He's like, I got these things to pay off first, and then I'm free. <laughs> he wanted, he wanted, everyone, everyone criticized him, apparently, because he wanted a debt-free life first. Uh, there's nothing wrong there's with nothing that. There's nothing wrong with that. Can you imagine the smile on someone's face? <coughs> Everyone's like, well, I don't want that. I want to spend the money. That's, like, I'm like, free. like, fix get debt free first and then think about it that's like a new beginning for you like Like you have no money you're spending on bills besides monthly usages monthly usage you have nothing following you from your past that's a you know you're just good to go i would be ecstatic i wonder if that would almost cure depression (laughs) damn yeah that's interesting do you follow uh competitive esports at all competitive esports yeah like competitive call of duty or anything (sighs) I, I I catch gl- clips. I don't really watch it. Like I probably like I want to. There's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. I've been just following it so intensely. Like it's franchised now, like football teams kind of thing. Oh, they make good money. So like Minnesota has one. I went to the event that was out here, mm-hmm. and then um, so yeah, it was like thirty million dollars per spot, and all the teams got roster mania pretty much, and now it's like every team is part of a state kind of thing do they when the team wins do they split the big win check between them i'm not sure because now it's like football season so they have like two home events each so minnesota will have one in may again chicago's having one in early april and then uh i would go to that that'd be kind of cool dude i'm going it's fun it's how i want your to ticket how much your tickets like cheap like 35 bucks after tax that's almost a show <laughs> well yeah that's almost a show but it's not a marshmallow show yeah like it's not a show like yeah, 80 bucks man dude it was like 266 dollars for three tickets for one night like that's expensive man. that's like a heavy baller night well yeah so uh yeah do you like comedy i love comedy do you know who gabriel iglesias is dude i fucking love i gabriel love I, dude, <laughs> I love him dude <laughs> so he had a show coming up at the treasure island oh recently or it's coming up in august oh. sold out already that doesn't surprise me. And then me. Jeff Dunham's coming to Mystic Lake sometime. Sold out? No, 132 bucks a ticket. <laughs> oh, my God. You can put her down, him down if he gets too much. He likes to nuzzle. Uh, I, I, need, I like. I think Kitty. That's fine. Hi. Say hi, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Roommate's cat that loves to hang out down here. Yeah, that's... No, so the interesting thing is, is I think it was Gabriel Iglesias. The two years ago when I met Marie, it was either Brief Carolina or Go Shoot for Free or go to Gabriel Iglesias for $100. Well, I chose Breathe Carolina. Wasn't really supposed to be there. Security told me that, you know, who are you with? And I just said, no, nah, I'm shooting for the event. I just walked right past him. And I got in. I was, well, <laughs> it's kind of the attitude I was rolling with because that's what the I've attitude had, I was had told had. to roll with. So I got in there, and then at some point I ended up seeing Marie and talking. And she said that she waved at me because she thought that I was saying something. And I said, uh... I'm not fucking talking to you or something like that. Like I sounded so rude. <laughs> and the thing, yeah. So that so not seeing Gabriel Iglesias is kind of like a blessing man, to I, me. But I still want to see him. I, oh man, I, what's up? <laughs> I want. <laughs> I didn't mean to grab him that hard, <laughs> but like I caught him and I thought he was. I, was like, I, uh, I man, I watch. I watched. I've seen his, his specials before, and he is hilarious. He really is, Gabriel Iglesias. Like he. People bag on all these guys because it's the same material that they see in the specials, and it's like, well, he builds off of his though. That's what I've noticed. Yeah, He'll take his old stories and capitalize with something that relatable in his life. Well, his old stories. Well, I saw in this last special. It's his old stories, 
um, talking about Frankie and stuff, he brought, like, he's like, yeah, like, this happened back then, or, like, do you guys remember this? And then he brings in, like, a new a story new, uh, yep. about what now happened. And it's like, dude, that's kind of cool. Like, you're telling your, your family stories and did you're making you, uh, money did, off of did it. Did you see the clip about, uh, <coughs> about Gabriel talking to Frankie about working at, uh, shoot, what's that restaurant? Some fish place, I forgot. I don't remember. It was some restaurant. And, uh, I guess Frankie's apparently super lazy and doesn't want to work. <laughs> That's what he was saying on the special. And then, and then Gabriel's like, well, what do you want to do with your life? And Frankie's like, I don't I don't know yet. I don't want... He's like, well... And Gabriel's like, well, I'll pay for any college you want to go to. I'll pay the whole thing. And I'm like, why would you just, just say something? He's basically giving you a career or anything you want. Dude, but, like, that's that's part of being too blessed. Like, you just, like... Mm-hmm. You probably, you probably you gets to you, you have eventually. so much that you can do that you don't know what to do. Like, he might not even know what interests him, you know? Like, I'm not saying he doesn't have a great home life or anything he, like that. But apparently, he, he watches ga- gamers on YouTube. You know, we all do it. We all watch yeah. you know, some of our favorite gamers. But if he does that, he, I mean, like, uh, like honestly, I can't preach or anything, but he, he's in that, like, great position where he could have, like, probably asked his dad for anything, and they could have figured out, like, a deal or something to get him that, and he could have probably made a career already if he wanted to. But he's only young still. So yeah, he's, 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 only still like nine, he's only, like, 18, 19 now, but, but like... My teacher, my math teacher from high school, his son went to college to be a demolitions expert. And I was like, oh, <coughs> he has to blow shit up for a living. Yeah. I wonder if that's fun or if that's like kind of sucks. It's, it sounds like it sounds like uh, it's very coordinated because if you watch the buildings, explosions go off in a certain way. You know, oh, yeah. You know, sh- and he's kind of in charge of how that goes. Oh, so I mean, like. If you like doing that, then that would be fun. Well, yeah, he gets to press the button, so I think that's the probably the best part. Probably just like Instagram, mom, watch this. <laughs> that's your car, but here's your new one. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's some Mr. B shit. Yeah. You destroy. What? I was thinking the same thing. Some Mr. B shit. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, you uh, you watch him. He's he's one of my favorite cr- creators. Like he just does so much. Man, I've I watch. Uh, what was I watching today? I was watching some video about like fails, and this one guy he uh, he tried running up a hill really drunk, <laughs> and he literally like turned into a tire and rolled all the way down to the hill and hit his head. Like on the tailgate of someone's truck, and I was like, "Oh, you poor, you poor guy!" And he, they go down and check on him. He's snoring. Like, I'm like, "Is that the drunk snore? Is that the like you're, you're out, knocked out? You know, you're knocked out?" And I'm like, "It's probably both." <laughs> See, the thing is, the thing is, though, he doesn't really have to worry. Concussion science has evolved so much over the last like five, ten years mm-hmm. that like we are so okay. A doctor will tell you if you are not okay, but like. Like modern medicine has helped I got a lot of a, people. I got a concussion when I was in the fifth grade playing football. What did they tell you? To they told it? they told me do not go to sleep. You, you your potential to die is like high. And I'm like really? Like I can't go to sleep tonight. They're like yeah, don't let him go to sleep. And I'm like, I'm like okay. They tell you like not to watch TV or electronics. And they told stay me to, in like, a dark room or they told me to like just go home and go to sleep. And I was like, eh, okay. they told you not to sleep. They told me but, not to sleep. I, I'm not kidding you. They told me not to sleep. But you were fine in every other. Yeah, eventually situation. I just eventually I just passed out, and went to sleep. Woke up the next morning. I was like, oh, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, we're golden, boy, boy. Like we're good." <laughs> they were uh, so like in 2016. They they didn't start, but that's when I heard about it. Is in like 2012. They said you know turn off the lights. You stay off stuff, stay awake, and take care of yourself. Don't strain your brain. Well, in 2016, when this individual went back in, he said that they're making you train your brain. So you're doing brain exercises, and eventually the exercise will stop working. So you go back in, and you figure out more exercises. You go through a bunch, and then eventually that you'll find like, some that will work. But like you're basically training out. the brain. You're training the brain. Like If concussions are really bad, you can't stand sometimes. You can't. You know, see isn't correctly. That, isn't that like something to do with like Potts syndrome, something like that? You, ever, really you ever heard of, You ever heard of that? I've uh, I've heard of like it's basically kind of you know E or C something. Or it's, e it's something. basically when you stand up. You know, like how if you stand up too quick, the blood flow doesn't get to your brain. You kind of yeah. almost fall back. This is kind of like 
the version of that, but like it's worse to where like people randomly faint out of nowhere, or if they get because up, if they get, I don't know if it's causing a concussion <coughs> or it caused it, but like they have to get up really slow, you know, and in some in some critical situations, it lands them in a wheelchair because it's just not safe for them to stand up. Whoa! I'm like, wow, that's really really crappy. But oh well. No, that's that's like that's pretty wild uh, to me that like. Oh, that's we can wrap it up, man. I mean, if you have to go, that's fine. Yeah, well, I gotta, we can I gotta, have I you on again. I was gonna talk about some audio production stuff, but we can save that for the next one. No, let's, um, do, let's do another one, most definitely. No, I mean, like the thing is, is I mean, I know when uh, when my friends have never done anything like this, step on, they're gonna be a little shy. Like I take take this last year to get comfortable to talk in front oh, of a camera so i've never done this before and it was rather fun yeah so like i just want to sit on here talk about topics or just pick people's brains and just have fun we had i think this episode turned out great i appreciate you being on the third episode of the suitcast um so if you want to promote yourself in any way for any platforms uh we can make that happen what would you like them to follow you on mm, just follow my dj page on facebook guys shows and ladders look me up I have that really cool hat on. <laughs> Sweet. I'll 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 throw it like right here for you. Okay.